Uh, Mr Speaker, thank you. With your permission, I will update the House on our response to COVID. The patience and hard work of the British people have combined with the success of the vaccination programme to reduce deaths and hospitalisations to their lowest level since last July. And from Monday, England will ease lockdown restrictions in line with step three of our roadmap. This will amount to the single biggest step of our journey back to normality. But after everything we've endured, we must be vigilant because the threat of this virus remains real and new variants pose a potentially lethal danger, including the one first identified in India, which is of increasing concern here in the UK. So caution has to be our watchword. Our country, like every country, has found itself uh, in the teeth of the, greatest, uh, the gravest pandemic for a century, imposing heartbreaking sorrow on families across the world, with more than 127,000 lives lost in the United Kingdom alone. And our grief would have been still greater without the daily heroism of the men and women of our National Health Service, the protection of our vaccines, already in the arms of over two-thirds of adults across the UK, and the dedication of everyone who has followed the rules and sacrificed so much that we cherish. Amid such tragedy, the State has an obligation to examine its actions as rigorously and as candidly as possible, and to learn every lesson for the future, which is why I have always said that when the time is right, there should be a full and independent inquiry. So, Mr Speaker, I can confirm today that the Government will establish an independent public inquiry on a statutory basis with full powers under the Inquiries Act of 2005, including the ability to compel the production of all relevant materials and take oral evidence in public under oath. In establishing the inquiry, we will work closely with the devolved administrations as we have done throughout our pandemic response. And my right honourable friend, the Chancellor of the Duchy of Lancaster, has this morning spoken to the First Ministers of Scotland and Wales and the First and Deputy, Ministers, Deputy First Ministers of Northern Ireland to begin those conversations. Every part of our United Kingdom has suffered the ravages of this, vir of this virus, and every part of the state has pulled together to do battle against it. And if we are to recover as one Team UK as we must, then we should also learn lessons together in the same spirit. So we will consult the devolved administrations before finalising the scope and detailed arrangements so that this inquiry can consider all key aspects of the UK response. Mr Speaker, this process will place the state's actions under the microscope and we should be mindful of the scale of that undertaking and the resources required to do it properly. The exercise of identifying and disclosing all relevant information, the months of preparation and retrospective analysis, and the time that people will have to spend testifying in public, in some cases for days, will place a significant burden on our NHS, on the whole of government, on our scientific advisers, and on many others. We must not inadvertently divert or distract the very people on whom we all depend in the heat of our struggle against this disease. And the end of the lockdown is not the end of the pandemic. The World Health Organization has said that the pandemic has now reached its global peak and will last throughout this year. Our own scientific advisers judge that although more positive data is coming in and the outlook is improving, there could still be another resurgence in hospitalisations and death.